Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to do the bow tie slippers. These are for women for sizes 5, 6, 7 and 8 and 9, 10. Today it's all included in one pattern. So let's take a closer look at this pattern. It requires Karen Simply Soft yarn. It requires just one ball and it has different colors. So you can see that there's two different colors here. If you wanted to make it one color you probably could too. And it's got a cute little bow tie. It's just an accessory if you wish to add that. If you wish to leave it off that's okay too. So Karen Simply Soft is the yarn of choice. You need a four millimeter size G crochet ho hook in order to play. And there are three different sizes written on this pattern. So there's five and six, seven and eight and nine and ten. Let me take you in closer and let's uh, decide for what it's actually asking us to do. So on the written pattern you can see it's color coded 5 and 6 is red, 7 and 8 is yellow, and 9 and 10 is green. So whenever there's a decision to be made in this particular idea you can see that there are different instructions that are provided. So let me come on over here and when we go to start this we're going to be starting at the toe and working our way down. But you can see for rows, uh, rows no, the ninth row 7 and 8 has a different set of instructions. So if you were to do this in the five and six you will end up on the eighth row just like so and then you'll just immediately advance up here to all sizes but if you're continuing on to seven and eight then you'll just follow these instructions. So you just have to follow where these are highlighted. The nice thing about this is that you can skip over instructions that don't matter to you if you wish. So every time there's a decision to be made so for example up here it says uh, one single crochet in each of the next 20, 22 or 22. Just look at the size that you're making and then just follow those sets of instructions when you're going to do so. So without further ado we're gonna get started and we're gonna start on the toe area and work our way backward and then we're gonna just be able to do the step by step. You'll need a tape measure today in order to just keep an eye on the sizes. So let's begin and let's start at the toe with round number one. So let's begin today we're going to create a slip knot in order to start and then we're going to be able to go through this pattern step by step. So once it's onto the hook you're going to then chain two. So one and two and we want to create the center of the toe area. These are not left or right they're both kind of like you can just slip uh, either left or right onto each foot it doesn't matter they're not made in left and right. So we want to begin the first round and it says single crochet um, six times into the second chain from the hook. So just count it back. It's the very first chain and you want to go into that chain six times. So just in, pull through and it's single crochet. So one, and we'll count these together going into the same chain for two and let that naturally wrap, rotate around. This is gonna be our third time and this is the starting strand right here. Just go right up over top of it. So this is gonna be for our fourth and our fifth and our sixth time. So once you get your sixth you're gonna join it to the beginning but if you're not sure just count it back from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five and six is right here. So I'm an experienced crochet. I can tell immediately what that is but if you're unsure just count it back and just pull through and through and that finishes off that center circle just in the front of the toe. So let's move along now to round number two. So round number two this is again all sizes. You're gonna chain up one and in the same one that you did the join I want you to put in two single crochets into the same one. So it's just gonna be one and two. I'm struggling a little bit and that's only because the last tutorial I was using a really big hook so it's, I'm going back down to the small size. So each stitch then is two single crochets into each. So if there's six stitches here there is gonna be six groups of two going all the way around. So I'm just putting two into each and I wanna make sure that you can identify when you're actually finished a, a round because it's not always easy and this is where most new crochets get hung up and accidentally do too many stitches. So let's just count on how many stitches. I'm just gonna do one more because that is the end and I can see that as an experienced crochet but if you're not sure I'll show you. So you've gotta have six groups of two. So one, two, three, four, five and six. So you see this section right here just right there. People think that's a stitch. It's a carryover of this beginning stitch. You do not want to use that as a, as a stitch on its own. So you just go into the first stitch that you created, the first single crochet and just join it together and when you do that look it pulls everything together just like you see. So let's move along to round number three. So round number three we're gonna carry on and we're just gonna do one uh, chain one and then each stitch only is gonna get one single crochet all the way around. So just one single crochet each stitch. I'll meet you at the end of this rotation and we'll finish that off together and then move on 
to round number four. So one single crochet into each. So finishing up the third round, see this is an extension of the first one here. So that's not a stitch and if you can identify that you're laughing all the way to the races. So let's uh, just join it to the beginning one and so then that was one single crochet in each. Let's move along to round number four. We're gonna chain up one and it says to do one single crochet in the first one which is the one right directly below it where you did the join and then the next one is going to be two single crochets into the same one. So just this one is gonna get two. So one and two. So here's the repeat pattern going all the way around. So the next one is gonna be one by itself and then the one after that is two into the same one. So one and two. So please do that same pattern going all the way around. So one and two and one and two and do that and I'll see you at the end of this round. So now just finished coming all the way around. The last one will have two single crochets into it because you're keeping that in balance. So it was one and two and one and two. So the last one will be ending up with two into the same one if you're keeping in count. So just join to the top of the beginning single crochet. So now let's begin round number five and it says it's the same as the third round. So it's just one single crochet in each. So chain up one and do one single crochet in each of them going all the way around. So just one single crochet. I'll see you at the end of this round. So this is round number five. So finishing up round number five I'm now just joining to the beginning one and good to go. So you can see it's still nice and tight at the top of the toe area. So let's uh, continue on round number six. So you're gonna chain up one and here's the repeat pattern. So the first two are going to be one single crochet in each. So one and two and then the next one over is gonna have two single crochets into the same one. So one and two. Okay. So the repeat pattern just to recap is gonna be there's gonna be two in a row that are just one in each and then the next one is going to be two into the same and please do that all the way around that same pattern for round number six. Finishing up round number six just coming into my last one there will be two into this one because I'm keeping in balance to the pattern and then I'm just going to join it to the very top of the first or the very beginning single crochet. So that was round number six. So I'm gonna just retry that one second. Stand by. So what we're going to do now is that that was number six. Now we're gonna move on to round number seven which is the same as the third round once again. So it's just chain up one and it's one single crochet into each of the stitches going all the way around. So one single crochet in each and maybe the, the end of round number seven. So let's just continue on. This is just finishing up round number seven and that was just one single crochet in each and now let's go to the eighth. This is the last time both of them are gonna be doing the same thing. So both all three sizes sorry five and six, seven and eight and nine and ten. So for eighth round for all of them it's just chain up one and there's gonna be one single crochet in, in each of the next three. So one, two and three and then the next one has got two into the same one. So one and two. So the next one is three in a row. So one, two and three and the next one is going to be two into the same one. Please do that idea going all the way around for round number eight. So just coming up and all the way around then round number eight and just finishing off with two into the same one because that's keeping in line with the pattern. So what we're going to do then is that we're gonna move on. So for those that are doing five and six you're going to stop here and just wait for me and those that are continuing on to the seven or eight or nine and ten you just have one more row to do or one more round to do before you catch up to the rest. So for those that are doing uh, five and six you can just uh, skip ahead at this part of the next part and those doing seven and eight, nine and ten we just have one more round that I'll do right now with you on camera. So for those doing seven and eight, nine and ten here's your final instruction before moving on until you can join our, your rest of your friends at five and six. So you're gonna chain up one and then you're going to do one single crochet in each of the next nine. So we're gonna do that. So just count it out together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. Okay, so if you wanna do that you can and then you're just gonna put two into the same one. So in the next one. Okay, so you did nine in a row and then two in the next and you're gonna do that twice. So let's count that out together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
this is eight and nine. There you go. And then you're gonna put two into the next one. And then you're gonna do that one more time. So okay, so it's a third time. So you're gonna do that for nine. So one, two, three, four, this is five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and your very last stitch is gonna have two into the same one. So one and two. So now you've just gone all the way back around and you're going to join it to the top. So we're gonna join our friends now five and six uh, and seven and eight, nine and ten all again and let's just cover the sizes that we need to do and I'm gonna give you some tips as well. So we're now going to do all sizes. This is five and six, seven and eight and nine and ten all now going to start again. So we're gonna chain up one and do one single crochet in each all the way around and we need to do this so that the distance measures up to four inches from the toe to where we're gonna stop and the, or it's gonna be four and a half or five depending on your size. But I'm gonna give you a tip because I just did a pair like this and what you can do is see how far up the foot it is. If you don't want it to be that far up you can just continue to do more rounds and move it up. So what you can do as you're doing it just slide your foot in and see where you're comfortable to where it should stop for you and once you're uh, comfortable with that you can just stop because when we go to do the next measurement here we're going to just be doing um, just back and forth with our um, stitch work and it says keep going until it hits to a certain amount. So this means that if you do this bigger up in this section there's just gonna be less area for this to be happening in the back and it really won't affect your, your foot. The only thing I would recommend is that keep an eye on the amount of rotations that you're doing with this because you're gonna want to make sure they're equal. So anything that you want to do from this point if you wanna change it then you just gotta keep an eye on that or just use your measuring tape as well. So let's uh, continue to move on and we're going to be able to just do this kind of information here. So when we have all sizes, so it's gonna be either four, four and a half or five, grab your tape measure and it will be from the top of the foot to a certain size that you see up here. Okay, so in this case I'm going to do the five or uh, four and a half. So I have to make sure I continue to rotate around so I get to way over here. So it's just gonna be able to do that. So let's just uh, carry on and let's just get you started on doing that section and then I'll get that done, the rest of it done on camera. So for all sizes you're just going to chain up one and just do one single crochet in each and you know how to finish around by this point. Um, you can just uh, just join it and then just move up chaining up one, one single crochet in each. So you're just gonna go around and around until you get to the measurement that you need. It's either four, four and a half or five and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that with you and then when we come back I will have that section done and then we'll carry on to creating the, the back of the foot area um, and we'll be able to get that done in no time at all. So I'll see you back here in just a few minutes. So just get this done. Okay, so now I've just finished a four and a half section. So it's from here to here. It should be around four and a half inches for my particular size. So you could have four, four and a half, five. So what I recommend to you at this particular point is that you can change this, uh, uh, this measurement and now is the time to do it. So if you wanna move it back up on your foot even further, then you're just gonna continue just to make it a few more rounds and then try it onto your foot and then just it'll be more secure up here. And then we're gonna do the outside of doing this. But I'm gonna move on to this section now anyway. But if you'd like to uh, just move this up, now is the time to do it and then you can catch me up here because the distance between here and here is a measurement that is already on this pattern here. So that is something that you can adjust and I'll tell you how to adjust that as well just in case that your foot is not standard. <laughs> not everybody's unique. So it, you know kind of saying it's a standard is kind of ridiculous anyway. So um, let's uh, move on in today's tutorial and let's uh, just uh, take a look at further on what we're going to do next. So our goal now is to make the bottom section of the foot. So we're gonna just move this section and it's just a matter of going back and forth a set of a number of rows in order to do it and it's a measurement of distance. So we're just now going to go, it says one single crochet, uh, um, 
one single crochet in the next 20, 20 or, or 22 or 22. So you have to just follow the size that's in here. So what we have to just do is just go back and forth to you either hit eight and a half, nine or nine and a half inches. But again, I'm going to show you in a little bit on how you can adjust that just in case that you try it on and it might be too big or too small and it's just really an easy fix in order to do that. So let's just uh, do that. I am doing a seven and eight size. So if you're just doing the smaller size five, six, you'll stop at 20 and everybody else will continue to 22. Let's begin. So carrying on now, we just chain up one and for my size seven and eight and nine and 10, it's 22 inches but are 22 stitches. For everybody else it's 20, it's five and six is 20. So you just count those out. So we're just gonna go one and it's just single crochet, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So that's where the five and six will stop but everybody else is gonna do a couple more. So just 21 and 22 and then you're going to stop and then from here, the section right here that you see here to here is going to be the sides of the foot. So you just turn your work and just go back in the other direction. So chain up one and just do one single uh, crochet in each going all the way back. And it's just doing this back and forth, back and forth till you get a certain amount of inches. So remember, um, if you're keeping with standard, it'll be the, the front of the foot. It'll either be uh, eight and a half, nine or nine and a half depending on the size that you're working on. So please go back and forth and get to the size that you want. You can try it on your foot uh, any time as well just in case that it's, uh, you have a unique size foot that is not listed in the pattern. You can just adjust this and just do a few more rows if you need it bigger or just uh, subtract some rows if you need it smaller. So carry on back and forth with just single crochet in. So once you get to the size that it's rec recommending from the top all the way to the back here, I would try it on your foot before you go any further because if you have to add rows, now's the time to do it. So if it's not uh, long enough for you and if it's too long, you can just subtract a few rows. So what I would do is just slide your foot in and then just pull the backs like this and see how it's gonna fit on your foot as soon as that's done. So once you have that satisfied and you got that and you've adjusted it, make sure you do both of the slippers the same way. So what I would do is if you are gonna customize it, then just count the number of rows in order to get it to work. So let's uh, just fold the back in half and what you wanna do is work through both of the thicknesses. So just inserting and matching the, the stitch work on the back. Just insert your hook in both sides and just pull through and through as a slip stitch. So just move to the next one through and through and keep doing that all the way back down the heel area of your, of your uh, slipper. And then once you're down at the bottom, what we're gonna do is fasten off. I'll show you some techniques to do that. You are gonna be wearing this. So you wanna take your extra care and making sure that you are securing those loose ends in nicely because you know, loose ends like to fall out. So we're gonna be able to secure those ends without that worry. So you're just coming all the way back down to the base. Once you're satisfied with that, you're just going to trim your yarn, use an extra long, long strand there and you are going to be able to weave that in. So just pull through the loop and tighten up onto itself and put this onto a darning needle. So rec recommending what you do, put it onto a darning needle and just glide it in to the stitch work. So just glide it in and then just let the hook come into the inside of the heel. So just pull it to the inside, sorry, let the needle come into the inside of the heel and then use the inside of the heel to bury this. So just going in and out of the stitch work. You can't see it anyway on the inside. So in and out, so one, going in a different path for two and different path for three. Once you're satisfied with that, you are just going to trim it right down and voila, that is done. So what we have to do now is that we have to do a perimeter of a different color if you wish. If you wanna use the same color, that's completely up to you. But we wanna trace this and get this edging to look really quite nice. So we're gonna use a different color pink for that and then we're gonna be doing the bow tie after that as well. So let's now go around the edge just one time with some single crochets and I'm just using a lighter pink and just insert this into your, your hook. 
So just start right at the back of the heel area and just going in because you've done single crochet back and forth you can use each one of the the rows to be your your counting as you're going all the way around. So just attach it with a slip stitch and then just chain up one and one single crochet in each. So right at the end of each row it'll be very clear to you if you're in person or where it is. So just advance down the side. Now put this on top. This is the straggler and you can go right up over top of it and then you don't have to worry about loose ends falling out of that either. So you're just following it around just at the edge of the rows and once you get this about in about there I wanna just get rid of it. Just put it behind and I'll trim that later and just keep on advancing all the way around. So this just provides a really nice touch at the top of the of the, the slipper. So eventually you're gonna run out of pieces that are part of the side and then you're gonna be up over top of the foot area. So what we're gonna do in just a moment is as we go all the way around you're gonna run out of the sides of the rows. So I just got one more side of the row to do and then you just immediately just jump to the first stitch on the top. Okay, so just going into each one of those stitches all the way around. Kind of reminds me, I don't know why these um, particular slippers remind me of I Dream of Genie. <laughs> I think she had different footwear other than this but uh, that's what it reminds me of. I think it's more the color than anything. So up on the side then of the other side and just working your way around. If you're familiar with um, crochet you, you can clearly see where you're gonna go. If you wanna add another round to this you can. It just only needs one round. Again just slip stitch it and then chain up one and then one single crochet into each if you wish. Again that's your choice. Okay, so you're coming up all the way to the end. There's nowhere for me to go other than in the beginning. So just join it to the beginning of single crochet and then get rid of that. So we're going to just trim a long yarn stra a strand as well and we are going to use that as your darning needle string. So just put this onto a darning needle. and I want you to glide it in and out of your stitches. So just going in, just coming on the underside of it. Just stay on the inside of the slipper so that you don't impede the outside look of the slipper at all. So just going in one, going back in the other direction for two and the other direction for three. So third time is the charm that which locks in your project. stitch work is nice and tight. So you're gonna get that right down to the project and then where you buried the other one you're gonna get rid of that as well because you buried that. And then what we have here is that we have the bow tie missing. So if you don't wanna do a bow tie now is the time to stop but your slipper is technically done. It's wearable at this point and then I'm gonna cover on how to do the bow tie because that'll just take a few moments. So let's cover on how to do the bow tie. We're just gonna start off with the slip knot. Put it onto the hook and we're gonna chain a total of 12. So let's do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then what I want you to do is second chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one and two. I want you to single crochet yourself across the chain using the same color. And then we're gonna change our color at the end of this one. And then we're gonna change it to the, the other pink. Uh, for the body of the bow tie and then we're gonna return back to this color at the end in order to kind of finalize the look of the bow tie. So all the bow tie really truly is is just a rectangle and the way that you're fastening it at the end makes it look like it's, it's actually the real deal. So it's more of an illusion than anything. So once you get all the way to the other side you are going to just uh, finish off this yarn. Okay, so just going into the last one. So get rid of that. 
hide in your yarn strands and then we're going to switch back to the other color and then we're gonna do the other color for two, three, four, and five. So for four rows in a row you're gonna use the other color. So let me just uh, weave in the ends here and then I will be right back on them. I'll just get you started with the other color. So let's introduce the other pink for four rows back and forth. So we're gonna start off with a slip knot. We're gonna come into the very first stitch on the bow tie where you left off really and then just join it, chain up one and then just one single crochet in each going all the way across and then you're just gonna turn your work and then chain up one and one single crochet all the way back the other direction and you're gonna do this for a total of four rows. So I think that at this point in the tutorial I think that you're good to go uh, with this. So get that done. So do four rows of this pink and then do a one more row then of this bright pink and then you're good to go. So fasten that off and then when I come back I'll have that done and I'll show you how to finish that off. Make it look like the look and we'll attach it to the top of our slipper. So here's the bow tie just as you see it. Now what we have to do is we have to take the, the color that we want which is darker and leave an extra long yarn strand right at the very beginning and I want you to grab this and pinch this in a way. So just push it down in the middle. Just push like so and you will get the bow tie look. So just using the yarn that is leading that is the extra yarn long strand just go around and I want you to just to push things together and just to get it to start to going. Just to get it to start to go and try to get it as close to the middle as you can. There we go. So I'm just gonna hold this yarn strand in behind so it doesn't get tangled and I'm gonna use the other one that is leading to the yarn ball to continue to wrap. So I wanna stop once in a while just make sure I'm adjusting this bow tie as I'm going because now it's time to do it because you'll be too late if it's not sitting right. So you're just gonna continue just to make it look good and just wrap it enough times so that you'll be satisfied with that. Once you're satisfied just turn it over and you will get the two strands that you started with and I'm gonna cut the one leading to the yarn ball and I'm just gonna tie this into a knot on the other side. So this means that this will be the back of the, the bow obviously. So just tying it, so just tie it nice and tight and just secure it again. With another tie just to make sure that's gonna hold. And I wouldn't be too shy to do that again if you wish. So here's what the, the bow tie looks like here. So now we have two strands of yarn and what I would do is put those onto a darning needle. So just kind of put them out so they look like they're the same distance. If not just fix it. A pair of scissors does wonders and put both of those onto your darning needle. Now what we're going to do is gonna grab your your um, slipper up and let's just fasten that together to the top of the slipper. So just eyeing it up where the middle is and just kind of reposition. So fold it out of the way and just go down through the middle just to kind of get it to go in position. Now's the time to adjust it if it's not in the middle and then come back up through the project and just get into behind this knot. And, and then back into the project itself. So your goal is is to come in and out and when you come up through like you see here just go through this wrapped section and back out the other side. And I would probably do that total, I'm gonna do that one more time. So just up through the project or through the, that circle area and come back down into the project. Okay, so once you're satisfied with that then at the back side you're going to weave in your ends. So just going in and out of the project three times. So just stay in the stitch work on this side of the project, the underside. So just go one and it fell off so I'm gonna just put it back onto my darning needle. And go for a second time. So number two and three. And if you do want to tie a knot that now is the time to do it that as well. Okay and I'm just gonna go for a fourth time because it's something that will be on the front of the foot. 
and now I can just trim it right out. So now I have my little slipper here. I have my little bow tie. Now is the time to shape it and you're all good to go and this is what this a particular project would look like if you completed one yourself and of course once you put your foot into it it'll have the correct shaping that you wanna do and there is no left or right because these are kinda like you can slide on either foot and you'd be good to go. So until next time I'm making on behalf of your inspirations as well as the crochetcrowd.com. Enjoy your new uh, little slippers here and have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.